Well, welcome back to Loaded Landscapes. My name's Simon Plant, and today I'm going to show you a very quick way to replace a bland sky within Photoshop. So, you know the kind of shots. You've got this lovely landscape, and the clouds are a little bit too wishy-washy. It might not be just a bad exposure. It might just be that the cloud hasn't got a lot of separation in it. So, you end up with something a bit uh, nondescript. And you may want to uh, do something about that, but you don't want to go into the uh, amount of detail uh, masking that sometimes is required. So... In this technique, I'm going to show you how you can quickly, with very little effort, replace the sky with something a little bit more colourful. Okay, so we're in Photoshop and we've got our image open. So this is an aerial picture I've done. It's something new to me. I've just started. I've just got my commercial drone license, so I'm doing a little bit more aerial photography and video uh, for a client of mine. So it's all a bit new. So this is an image I took in a rapeseed field, which um, are kind of in full bloom here in England at the moment. Um, but the sky's a little bit washed out and a bit wishy-washy. So to um, to add a bit more drama and a bit of colour, I thought a really nice blue sky would be a nice complementary colour for the yellow. Now, for this to work, what we do is we're going to use the uh, lower edge of this existing image, the sky in it, the, the lighter areas, and we're going to softly blend that with the new donor sky. Now, I've got one here. The new donor sky for this to work needs to have you've guessed it, a fair bit of white in it as well so that we can seamlessly blend the bottom of it here with the existing picture. Now this is quite easy to do, the first thing we do is command or control click on the thumbnail that makes a nice selection of it, then we can click command or control C which copies the image to our clipboard, we go over to our existing image of our field then press command or control V which pastes the sky into place. So I've got two there, let's get rid of that one. So this is our sky in. We're going to drag that below our image here. If for any reason you can't seem to drag it, sometimes the layer is locked and you have to double click on it. Uh, this is actually a smart object, so it's actually okay. The sky image at the moment is too big, but we'll worry about that in a second. Let's just drag it below. Now, First thing we have to do, we do have to mask out some of this sky, but don't get worried, I'm not lying, we don't got doing any fine details here, it's a very simple mask. We're going to use the quick selection tool up here, we're going to click on drag on the, on the sky area, and there's a few bits there, it's uh, sort of taken out which we need to keep, but no, don't need to worry about these fine details because we're going to bring some of that back in. The next thing we need to do is to click on the layer mask, now when you click on this you might find that the mask is the wrong way around, like so. At the moment, we've got the sky showing in our ground area, the field area, and not in the sky. To rectify that, we highlight the mask and press the command or control and the I key, which inverses the uh, the mask. So now it's the right way around. Next thing to do is resize the sky. Uh, I'm going to uh, highlight the uh, sky layer. And uh, again, command or control click on the thumbnail to load the selection. Then control or command T. Okay, that brings our transform box up. And I'm just going to reduce the size of the sky so we can see what's going on here. Now remember, ideally, I want more of the bottom of the sky showing through because that's where I'm going to be able to blend in easiest. So sometimes it's a matter of playing around with this and making sure that you know make life easy for yourself make sure that uh, there's a fair bit of white um, on the sky uh, which meets the horizon of the existing image so press enter when you're happy so we've now got the sky selected and our new sky in place but this is where it gets a little bit more interested in where we've got just some of the fine details. We've still got some of these bits of white of the existing sky showing through in our landscape here. So what we're going to do next is to, to try and blend that in. Now first thing I would do, sometimes with these skies they look a lot different uh, in exposure and sometimes it's a bit of a giveaway. So you may have to add, uh, highlight the uh, sky layer and on top of the sky layer, we're going to add a curves adjustment. You might want to, we can come back to this, might want to just lighten the sky a bit so it blends in with the uh, with the existing landscape a little bit better. And that helps us again with the blending. 
Next, we're going to highlight the layer mask of our field, and I'm going to get a gradient tool. Make sure you've got foreground to transparent selected. Okay, click OK, and obviously you want the linear gradient for this. And we're going to grab the gradient, hold down the shift key. We want to go from white to black, so drag it up like so, and you'll see that starts to blend some of the existing sky into our new one and gives us a nice transition. Let me alt or option click on the layer mask and you can see there the blend. Okay, let me just zoom in. Let's see, see what that looks like now. You can see the horizon is looking pretty good. There's no telltale uh, ghosting marks, outlines or fringing. It all blends in rather nicely and sits in like it should do. And we've got a little bit more interesting sky. Again, you can come back into the layer mask. If you want to darken it back up again, you can do. I prefer to keep it this one here, I think a little bit lighter to help it sit in with the original image. And I don't think anybody would look at that particularly and say that's been stripped in. It looks fairly natural. So you don't want to go over the top particularly with it. And that is all there is to it. It's a very quick way of blending uh, a new sky into something that's very boring and mundane and adds a little bit more impact. So let's just see a before and after. Here's the before image and then here's the one with a very quickly replaced sky. So, you know, we could still come back in, obviously, uh, use a transform tool and try and get a little bit more of the blue in here if we wish to. But it just shows you uh, a quick way of how this works. So I hope you've enjoyed the video and I hope to catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.